POV has become super popular in surfing in the last five years or so. And I was contacted by DJI to test their Osmo Action 4 as a surfing POV camera. I typically shoot with POV for a few reasons. One, to create raw POV clips and second when I'm out with my students just to get a couple of different angles and stuff as well. Of course there's a lot more you can do with this but today I want to talk about it from a surfer's point of view. This could be a little button. One of the things that's difficult with filming surfing is the width of the frame. And often I've found that, you know, you'll be in a barrel or you'll do a really nice turn and you can't actually capture the essence of what that moment was with this uh, 155 degree field of view lens you can and you can do so in really high quality frame rates and resolutions which is a bit of a game changer having a 4k option at 120 frames per second is pretty strong and to be honest the quality of the footage is is kind of unreal you can go to 240 frames per second but it's limited to 1080p if you do plan on shooting at those higher resolutions and frame rates though, you'll need a good SD card. I tried to shoot a couple of these things with a backup SD card and it just failed. Like it would slow down, it wouldn't write to the card properly, it would cut off mid-sentence. So I'm gonna take the Osmo. So you really need to come to the table with a decent SD card. One of the extremes is what I would recommend. One particular strength that I found stood out was the battery life. I mean, I took this out for at least like four sessions in a row without having to charge it, which if you've used other action cameras before, you'll know is not common. I think that offers a pretty resounding benefit. If you're like me, you get annoyed with having to take things out and charge them and, and fiddle around with cords. This one just seemed to power on. It was, it was pretty, pretty sturdy in terms of battery life. Uh, the DJI currently doesn't have a native floaty back and the floaty back is that orange floaty thing that you've seen uh, people out in the lineup with which basically just allows the camera to float when it uh, jumps into the water. Instead DJI have gone for the leash style setup. For me I definitely prefer the floaty back and you can get third party floaty backs for these. Uh, and that's just because sometimes the string will actually get in the shot, like it'll hang over the front of the camera. And it's also just a little bit disconcerting to have that rope around your neck. Typically when I film with action cameras for the POV surfing clips that I do, uh, I actually won't have any attachment uh, from me to the camera or vice versa. I just keep it on the floaty back and that way if I do drop it, I'll just look for it in the water and it just pops up to the surface. So that's one thing that I'd love to see DJI introduce is a native floaty back. I'm really impressed with the quality of the footage. I mean, if you look at some of this stuff in slow-mo, it comes up really well. It's really crisp and sharp. And of course, at the high frame rates, you've got the flexibility to sort of get creative with your edits and stuff. One really important feature of the camera is that you can have it turned off to save battery life. It makes these really satisfying sounds. And then to simply turn it on and start recording, all you have to do is press the record button and it comes on and starts recording. And then when I press stop, it gives you a little countdown, three, two, one, I'm turning off and there it goes. So I really like that feature for surfing. I think it's really important. You don't typically want the camera just sitting there on the whole time for battery life as well. But sometimes if you haven't locked the screen by accident, 
uh, then the water can get on the screen and change your settings and, and mess all sorts of things up. So that's a really good feature. And I found that once I had the good SD card in the camera, that uh, was 100% reliable. Uh, when I had the shitty SD card in the camera and I would try and do the instant turn on and record, uh, it would initialize, it would sort of take its time and I missed a couple of ways because of that. So again, that SD card is really important uh, at the higher frame rates. The bite mount is super comfortable. It snaps on really easy. I actually really like the new snap-on feature. It makes putting uh, different bite mounts on or, or, or different mounts onto the camera really quick. Instead of having to spend a bunch of time screwing in uh, a new mount onto the bottom or whatever, you basically take something that's already screwed in, so you, have a, you can have multiple different mount setups, and then just snap them on the camera and you're ready to go. In order to go vertical and shoot vertical with the uh, Osmo Action 4, you basically put on a little harness, like a little case for the camera, and then you snap it on vertically. Uh, this can be a good way just to get a bunch of social content if uh, that's your desired output with the content. It actually does remove the heavy lifting quite significantly from the edit. I mean, a lot of the vertical things that you see on my Instagram reels or YouTube shorts that's uh, those are edited clips from vertical so i have to actually keyframe those to keep them in the vertical frame uh, where shooting it vertically removes that obviously that also limits though the application in a landscape uh, format so you have to be um, kind of just ready to shoot for socials if you're going to shoot it vertically but again it is quite a helpful feature if that's the look that you're going for let's talk about the overall use and ease of use of this camera. I actually find that the menu and whatnot is really intuitive and super, super easy. I'm really simple when it comes to shooting with, shooting anything, to be honest. I'll put everything in auto. I don't wanna to have to edit something too much. I don't like adjusting colors too much. And I certainly don't wanna be fiddling around with different settings in between waves at the start of a shoot when the waves are pumping. I just wanna put the camera in my mouth and just friggin' go. And uh, this has been really good for that. Um, you can see here, you basically just swipe through the settings. Uh, it makes this really satisfying little click noise <laughs> as, you roll, as you scroll through the different settings. And uh, to be honest, the field of view, the resolution are the main things that I look at. And then maybe I'll switch between like a uh, photo, which is very obvious. Photo. <laughs> which is just done with one button. So I really appreciate how easy that is because I feel like with other cameras, I've been a little bit overwhelmed at times with that stuff. So yeah, versatility wise, using this camera on land and even in the water, the audio was something that stood out as being super impressive. I mean, I was in windy conditions. Here's what the action for sounds like when you're speaking to it out in the wind. Midway through the session, finding myself wishing I had a floaty for this thing because I'm nervous that I'm going to lose it. And then in the water too, often what happens with uh, other action cameras that I've used, water will sit over the microphone and the, the audio is just completely unusable. Whereas this, it's, it remains quite crisp even out in the water. So I found that to be quite uh, impressive and to be honest, opens up the door for uh, more of a vloggy style approach where you can capture dialogue quite easily without having to, to worry too much. Well, we just didn't get let on the bus because we have surfboards with us. It also, for me, brings in the opportunity to use this instead of using my phone. I love not having my phone on me, but at the same time, I love having something that I can capture a moment with. So I think this really offers a good replacement there. And of course, offers a much higher camera experience than something like a phone could do. <laughs> so wrapping up this review, I'm super impressed with the DJI Osmo Action 4. I'm going to continue to use it. I really enjoy the, the quality of the footage. I love how easy it is to use and I'm particularly impressed with the battery life. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you're in the market for an action camera. Speaking of which, should I do a POV video, like a how to POV video, best practices for POV in surfing perhaps? Uh, there are some ways you can actually gather 
good insights around technique, uh, around form, and then just a few hints around aesthetics as well. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys would be interested in. But yeah, I've put a link in the description below if you want to check out the Osmo Action 4. Thanks for tuning in to this review. And of course, thanks to DJI for sending me this and sponsoring this video. If you want to check out how I've cropped some of those clips that I've shown throughout this video into Instagram Reels, for example, uh, you can go to my Instagram at Kales Broccoli. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Yep.